Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Popeye, them finos say you're firm on street. And the news where you carry are no counterfeit. So tell all who are fighter you, them can't defeat. And I got give your strength so your heart no weak. Mm-hmm. So I say God and greatness. Like, subscribe, and share to Popeye News Links if it's the truth you want to hear. So yeah. Greetings, greetings, viewers and subscribers. That princess on your screen, her name is Jacia Makala. Jacia is Chantal Blake Makala's daughter, and she's celebrating her sixth birthday today. Jacia. I am sure that someday you're going to be hearing this. Your mom, Chantal, she loved you very much. And it was your father, Shane Makala, who is responsible for what happened to her. He took you and your siblings to Canada and has not allowed you to communicate with none of your mom's side of family because he does not want you are your siblings to know the truth they're asking us to wish you a happy birthday today and they want you to know that they love you very very much princess jacia if you are even seeing this when you are 20 odd years old happy birthday to you and remember that your family your mom's side of family love you very much all right now I released a video last night about certain allegations being made against a police constable at the Bridgeport Police Station. I have been going through the comments and there are some people who are saying that it is not true. The story is fake. Now, I'm not sure what they are saying is not true or what is fake. But let me tell you what is true. Listen to me carefully. It is true that a female prisoner made certain allegations against Constable S. She stated that he took Leoda Bradshaw out of the cell. It is true that the female prisoner, she told investigators that Leoda told her that she and Constable S did the things and he did not use a condom. It is true that iProbe and CIBHQ they are carrying out investigations. It is true that Constable S and a female police officer, they were transferred from the Bridgeport Police Station based on the allegations. So is Leoda pregnant or not? In the video I dropped last night, I told you that I cannot say yes or no. Are the allegations being made by the female prisoner true? I cannot say whether they are true or not. Nationwide News Network, they are reporting that their sources are saying that the female prisoner has confessed, saying that lies were told on Leoda and the police constable and that the story was fabricated. Now, I am not discounting Nationwide's sources. I am waiting to see what the investigations unearth. I am hoping that at the end of the investigations, the JCF is going to be saying what their findings are. Are you following me? In today's news, there is a big scam going around for a very long time. May I talk about decades? Listen to Central Westmoreland Member of Parliament, George Wright, telling us about someone who was scammed by one of these scammers. Listen this. Good morning, Popeye. I am calling you to inform you that there is a gentleman, a big man, going around pretending that he has US dollars to sell. And uh, what he did, I was told yesterday in Savlamar, and I would assume that he is going right across the country. He went there with 1,400 US. And then when he asked, what is the rate? And then they would have said $140. He then gave them the money 
and then grab back the money because then the, the money was already counted he then grabbed the money and said no he need more and i think at that time he switched the money and then they decided to take the 140 which was agreed after which he collected his sum which was over 200,000 and he left so remember now the money was already counted and, and, and wrapped with a elastic band he hurried away after collecting his money and uh, uh, later after when the lady decided to check the money again the lady when the lady looked there was a a 20 dollar on top and then the rest was one dollar and two dollars so what i think happened then is that when he grabbed the money to say that he need more for his us he switched the money so i want people to be aware that they are scamming not just young persons are scamming but also elderly because i understand this man should be up in his 50 enough or about in his 60s so i just want to bring this awareness so the people can know and look out for this criminal so you heard what mp george wright said it means that if you are in the business of changing money once you get the us dollars and check it off if for any reason you give back the person and then take it back check it again i know of a lot of persons who have been swindled out of hundreds of thousands of dollars this way and the truth is you will hardly hear these crimes being reported on the news please be careful tell your staff be careful tell your wife or your husband your girlfriend your boyfriend your children, if they are going to be changing money. Be ye aware. This one took place in the Copper Avenue, New Harbour Village area of Old Harbour, in the parish of St. Catherine. We are told that late Sunday night, April 7, a 32-year-old female teacher, she securely locked up her house and went to bed. When she woke up early yesterday morning and made checks, she realized that her house was broken into. Hoodlums broke off the lock to the back door, entered the house, searched her handbag which was on a table and stole from it. Bank cards and the car keys for her Honda Fit motor car that was parked outside. The hoodlums then stole her 2015 silver Honda Fit motor car. Just like that. In this next report, a Canadian citizen, his name is Andrew West. He was born on February 4, 1967, 57 years old. Like I said, he's a Canadian citizen. We are told that Andrew and his wife, who is a retired teacher, and other family members, they arrived in Jamaica on Saturday, March 30, and they were supposed to depart the island on Sunday evening. April 7. They were staying at the Roundhill Hotel in Hanover. About 11 o'clock, Sunday morning, April 7. Hours before Andrew and his family were scheduled to depart the island, Andrew, he went snorkeling on the beach of the hotel. We are told that after a while, Andrew's wife and other family members, they realized that Andrew he was out snorkeling longer than he usually does. As a result, they went to search for him. About minutes to 1 p.m., Andrew's lifeless body was seen floating, face down about 25 meters from shore. A family member removed Andrew from the water. The police and a doctor were called in and Andrew, he was pronounced D-E-A-D. The police, they are awaiting a post-mortem examination to ascertain what led to Andrew's demise. Sad indeed. This next incident, it took place Sunday morning, April 7, almost 12 midday. 
It took place at Top Lincoln in the Grangeville area of Westmoreland. We are learning that a team of police officers acting on intelligence, they carried out a raid at a one-bedroom apartment board building in the area and bingo. One black Taurus 9mm pistol with the serial number intact affixed with a magazine containing four rounds of 9mm cartridges were found under the house and rock piling used to support the building. No one was arrested in connection with this find, but intelligencers, big up on herself, and Westmoreland police, job well done. Over in the parish of St. James, the police, they have arrested and charged two guys for firearm-related charges. Reports are that yesterday afternoon, Monday, April 8th, about 1 o'clock. The St. James Police, they were conducting an operation along the Chambers Drive Main Road in the Fairfield area of Montego Bay when they signaled a Nissan Silphy motor car to stop. The driver, he complied. It is said that the two guys who were in the car, they started acting in a suspicious manner. The police, they searched the car and bingo. One black and silver 9mm pistol was found under the back section of the front passenger seat. As a result, both guys were charged by the police. They are one, Linval Watson, but he's popularly known as Brian. He is 22 years old and he's living at Kinggate District in the Anchovy area. And two, Joshua Bell. He is 20 years old, and he's living in the Portobello area, both in the parish of St. James. Joshua and Brian, they were slapped with firearm-related charges, and they'll be facing the courts shortly. St. James Police, job well done. This next incident, it took place yesterday afternoon, Monday, April 8th, about a few minutes after 12 midday. It took place along Walkway 15 in the 5 East area of Greater Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine. <laughs> listen this now, listen this. We are learning that a group of persons, they were in a shop in the area. Among the group was a 42-year-old man named Rylan Ricardo James. On June 24th, coming up, Rylan, he would be celebrating his 42nd birthday. He lived in the same 5 East area. Now, we are told that Rylan and other customers to include a female. They were in the shop when the female, she accused Rylan of deliberately touching her on her front. Are you following me? This female accused Rylan of deliberately touching her on her front. This caused an argument and the female, she told Rylan, Alright, you are bad man. May I go for my man and come back. The female left and sometime later, she did return with her man. The guy, he went up to Rylan and an argument started because according to him, I him alone supposed to touch him woman, Deso. The argument got heated and the guy, he pulled a knife and inflicted some serious wounds to Rylan's chest and his abdomen. The guy, he then left out of the shop and ran away making good his escape. Rylan, he was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was officially pronounced D-E-A-D. -E so that guy, he's wanted by the police for killing Rylan because Rylan... He touched his woman on her front. Then, <laughs> this guy of sense? The mayhem. This next incident, it took place yesterday evening. Monday, April 8th, almost 7 o'clock. It took place in the vicinity of a Supreme Ventures outlet. Right at the intersection of the High Level Road and the Sandy Bay Main Road in the parish of Hanover. That man on your screen. His name is Jermaine Ricardo 
Hunter, but he was popularly known as Richie. Richie was a 36-year-old taxi driver and he was living at Ballground in the Mount Pelia area of Hanover. We are told that Richie, he parked his grey 2010 Toyota Wish motor car that he used to operate as a taxi right beside the Supreme Ventures outlet and he sat on a chair on the outside. Our information is that a yellow motorcycle with two hoodlums aboard rode up and stopped. The Pelian, he pulled a gun and opened gunfire hitting Richie to his upper body. Richie, he fell off the chair onto the ground and the hoodlums, they rode away making good their escape. When the shooting subsided and persons went and made checks, the lifeless body of Richie was seen lying on his back in a pool of blood. He appeared to have died on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, two 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. And we are learning that there was a shooting in the Lagood area of Hanover early this morning. We are working on that story and in a subsequent video, we are going to be telling you more about that incident stand by for it but in the final story for today this one took place last night monday april 8th about seven o'clock it took place at kian Karan in the darlistan police area in the parish of westmoreland we are learning that a guy his name is Duane kinglock but he was popularly known as roku Last month, on March 19, Roku, he celebrated his 36th birthday. Now, Roku, he owned and operated a shop at Kian Karan. About two years ago, I carried a story. Roku, he was shot and injured by hoodlums in the same Kian Karan area. He survived that attack. Last night, Roku, he was in his shop when he was approached by two hoodlums. The hoodlums, they pulled guns and opened gunfire at Roku, hitting him all over his body. Roku, he fell on his back on the top of a fridge in his shop and the two hoodlums, they made good their escape on foot in the area. The police, they were called and when they went on the scene, from all indications, Roku, he died on the spot. So, remember I told you that Roku, he was shot before, but he survived? Well, this time around, the hoodlums, they ensured that Roku, he went down and he stayed down. Because when the police processed this crime scene, a total of 18 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues blessed love everybody tell a friend for tell a friend for tell a friend about papa in news link and pnl blog tv like subscribe and share with silver sin if we just unite what a country this will be if we just unite jamaica live in unity if we just unite what a country this will be Criminals, them a mash up Jamaica. 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 Criminals
mash up Jamaica Jamaicans mash up Jamaica Oh Jamaica, me sweet Jamaica Cry me to mash up Jamaica Criminals, them a mash up Jamaica Jamaicans mash up Jamaica Oh Jamaica, me sweet Jamaica Jamaica, 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 J